Hi, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Week Marin, where we're practicing the integration of the eight dimensions of wellness into our daily lives. I want you to know this webinar is being transmitted in English with simultaneous translation in Spanish. And a big thank you to Marta Batone in advance for uh, being our interpreter today. And Michelle, I kick it to you. Thank you, John. Hola, bienvenido a Semana de Bienestar a Marin. Este webinar se está grabando y presentando en inglés y se traduce simultáneamente al español. Muchas gracias a Marta Bitton, que es nuestra intérprete esta tarde. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. And make sure as you're engaging in these wellness events this week that you're tracking your progress in the tracking sheet that will be placed shortly in the chat. And then also remember to complete the Google form to enter to win a prize uh, at the end of the week. Uh, need to have those submissions by Friday at 1 o'clock p.m. And we'll be doing our celebration and uh, identifying winners at 3 o'clock p.m. this Friday. So that's exciting. And I couldn't say that with also uh, thanking our generous sponsors to making all of this possible. So a big thank you to Kaiser Permanente, Marin Health and Human Services, and Redwood Credit Union. And so today, you have joined session 12 of 15 total sessions offered during Wellness Week Marin. And we're so fortunate to have Michael <clears throat> Pritchard here today. He's a nationally acclaimed keynote speaker and youth um, motivator. And he's going to be here, or he's here today, to talk to us <laughs> about the power of storytelling. So with that, Michael, thank you for joining us, and the floor is yours. Thank you, John, and always a pleasure to uh, be with you and Sergio and all you folks that are great geniuses of technology, which I have no skill at at all, but I do know how to tell a story about why technology is so important and what we can do from it to help bring community unity together, lift up hearts, remind people of compassion and connection to the greater good. Um, many years ago, I was taking, uh, and I, if you go on YouTube, you might be able to watch me introduce Joan Baez with the, the, the storytelling that I'm, I'm doing. And it's, it's about learning that we're all part of the bigger picture. And our attitude of positivity is important. Always remember that blessed are the flexible, for they shall not get bent out of shape, Semper Gumby. <laughs> so here I am, I was driving a, a, a very holy man down into Santa Cruz, and I banged my car. And I was telling this story just the other day to folks here. And I got out and I was very upset, very angry. And uh, you know, the, the line I teach it with anger management is uh, nobody can get your goat unless you tell them where it's tied. So anger past 30 seconds is ego and the ego is not your amigo. Let it go. And I still was so angry that I had bumped the car. I was cursing and, and yelling and this elderly hippie guy goes, hey, dude, dude. Dude, I go, I start laughing. I go, yeah, yes, sir. Yes. How can I help you? He goes, go to Google Earth in your brain. Back out, get some perspective. Back way out, get more perspective. Go way out into the galaxy perspective. Big blue orb, Earth, right, dude? What just happened here is a meatball. Let it go. And I started laughing and I said, wow. And I, said, <laughs> I go, you're just talking about perspective. When I get upset, I should go to Google Earth in my brain and put it in perspective that it's just a meatball. I said, you know what I think I should do? I said, there's a pig Latin term. Now, some of you might not know what pig Latin. All folks like me, we, we, we had you know, many comedians teach pig Latin, take the middle part of the word and stretch it around. So relax becomes elax ray. And I told him, I said, you know what I want to do? I want to take you all over America and have you shoot the uptight, serious people with the wave, the cosmic wave of the Santa Cruz elax ray. And we were howling, laughing, you know, and he was like, do that would be excellent. So we're, we're laughing and I started to realize 
sometimes there, there's no such thing as a coincidence. You're intended to get the message that you're intended to get. Serendipity, synchronicity, happenstance, whatever you want to call it. Pay attention, be focused, be conscious, be mindful and kindful. And in this story, I, I thought years later, I was on stage and I think about how when we get angry, we try to get all up, we get vicious and mean. And I had been introducing my good friend, uh, Joan Baez, and uh, her sister Mimi Farina created Bread and Roses and was one of my dearest friends. And we go to schools and places to uplift people, to help them. We go to hospices, prisons, jails, and wherever there's isolation and loneliness, we go to perform, to sing, to lift, to do comedy, to do art, to help the human being who might be in struggle for their loneliness to get past that and reintegrate into the positivity of community unity. And here I was, and, and I started to laugh because uh, uh, Joan was a peace person, a person of peace of quake. And I said, it, it, I found it ironic that Richard Nixon, who was our president, stood up in 1974. And I, I would do this at the Greek theater, doing an imitation of President Nixon. He looked like this. Are you old? But President Nixon said, listen to this, this is ironic, 1974, the last thing he said, the most powerful man on the planet, this was his speech, this was his speech to the people, there are people out there, and they might hate you, and they will only win if they get you to hate them back, then you begin to destroy yourself. And I was like, because I work with kindergartners, I was going, gee, Mr. President, what about what comes around goes around? Didn't you ever learn that in elementary school? The good you do will come back to you. The bad you do would be sad for you. But the good you do will come back to you. So all of us, when we story tell, we remind poor, uh, people of the importance of connection, of heart, of compassion. And I have so many stories about that, that it's astounding. Um, I call my friend Susan Williams. Uh, her husband, Robin, was one of my dearest friends, one of the most brilliant, noble, integrity-filled guys who was all funny and fun and just great for people. And he was a, a, a person who could, as an artist, portray incredible wisdom uh, in struggle and in sorrows and grief. He was a genius. And Susan had called me about a young woman back in Indiana. And uh, her name was Terry Neighbors. And she has a whole, um, she has a whole uh, nonprofit for her daughter who passed away unexpectedly at her own hand at 14. And she was deaf. And she had been teased a lot by the kids, not just bullied, but teased and tormented. And it got to her because she was deaf. And her mom and dad were farm folks from back in Indiana and great, sweet people. Terry's such a, a great soul. And uh, she said, I have to ask you, Mr. Mike, uh, do you think it'd be okay? Uh, we spent a lot of money, uh, $5,000 on uh, hearing aids for my daughter and she's gone now. And on occasion, I just go in and I see them on the top of her dresser. And we're trying to build our nonprofit called Aaron's Promise to honor her. And we lost her, but I know that she wanted, want us to do good things in the community to help other kids who might be suffering. And I saw these and she goes, I, I have to be honest, Mike, I just sometimes, I just think she's still here in a way. And I was out and helping other people in a very poor part of uh, Indiana, in a very rural part. And there was a little kid there. And uh, he was 
he had cerebral palsy and he was also deaf. And I just thought, should I give him these hearing aids? What do you think? And I said, well, I think it would be a good thing to make sure that they got used in a well way. And you never know who that little kid is going to become. If you think in your heart that you're doing something that provides something good out of the generosity of the spirit that your daughter had when she was there. And I think you should. And she did. And as we learn in life, the more we give, the more blessed we are and receive. Good things happen for us sometimes. I'm not talking religion, folks. I'm talking spiritual. I'm talking just that things, good things can happen. And that the greatest gift that we get is to realize the good you do will come back to you. The good you do will come back to you. I've been doing that for years, and I saw a young firefighter go by, and I was teaching that in kindergarten. And he yells off the truck, hey, Mr. P, the good you do will come back to you. And I was thinking for all of us teachers, sometimes we think they're not listening, or they don't hear us, or the stories we tell are insignificant to them. You'd be wrong. Tell them stories. Tell them about love and laughter and hope. Tell them about fun and joy. One time at our house, because uh, I always have kids over from all over, the kids were there and there was a man ringing the doorbell. And I mean, this is a silly, funny story, but ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. Um, you know, I'm a lumbering old guy and I get up and I walk over and I open the door. I go, sir, what do you want? Why are you ringing my doorbell angry? He goes, do kids live here? I go, yeah, uh, why? And he goes, do, do they own a water balloon launcher? I, go, I don't know, maybe their mom bought one of those. And he goes, well, I'm the umpire here and I just got hit in the rear end with a water balloon and, and, and I was embarrassed. And I went, Okay, and I'm I go, get down here. And all of them come down and I'm yelling at them. I'm going, we apologize to this man. He's up there spending his time umpiring a game. And you guys are not being respectful. He goes, well, I knew it was for here. I heard laughter. And they all start <coughs> like, enough, enough. And then the littlest guy, he was like six. He's standing right there. I said, go, get back upstairs. Thank you for apologizing. And he said, Mr. Mike, does this mean I can never come back over and go swimming and be with the guys? I go, no, no. I'm not yelling at you. I'm, I'm yelling at the behavior. I love you. So I'm not yelling at you. You can't get these big guys to get you into doing something to get you in trouble, right? Right. Don't even ask. Yes, sir. I said, go back upstairs. He stops at the landing and he turns around and he goes, sir, coach, Mr. Mike. Yes, what, 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 what? You have to admit it was an amazing shot from a hundred yards away, right in the rear end. Of the this is part of being a father in the community and extending your light of family and extending your light of hope that they might one day be dads and learn how to be a good dad who's forgiving and laughs and shrugs off and tries to do the right thing as much as we can. Why is this storytelling so important to us as a community? What we take in to understand life, and as one of the kids taught me, we talked about it earlier, don't overstand people, understand people, and understand yourself. Wow. So how, how would we go about that? You think about history and the storytelling of history is so significant right now because there's a lot of anger out there, a lot of anger. And it's about politics and it's about stuff that we can't control, we can't control. But here's what I can tell you. In this life, there was a young man who was a poet, 
and he was burned in a fire and his wife was badly burned. He was burned and she was burned and she passed away. And then he, being a brilliant poet, lost his son in wounded in the war, but he lived, but he still had to be his caretaker for a long time. He was an officer in the army. And he was so overwhelmed with the negativity of the world. It had been a civil war when he was alive. And Ulysses Simpson Grant said, everybody wanted a civil war till the third year. And they saw other children pass. And what he said was, he wrote a poem. And in despair, I'd hang my head. There is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song. Peace on earth, goodwill to men. But then I heard the bell peal loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail and the right prevail. With peace on earth, goodwill to men, to all. Wadsworth, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow wrote that. He was a poet laureate of America. Years later in 55, Johnny Marks, a great songwriter, Jewish combat troop guy who had a bronze star and four battle clusters. He wrote it into a song and everybody said, wow, that's an old song. Nobody's going to listen to that. But Bing Crosby sang it in 1956, years and years later, and it sold 5 million copies. And what that miracle creates is never quit before the miracle happens. Believe in yourself. Believe in the power of peace and positivity. Believe in the power of storytelling to make your point. Do it every day you can to the people that you love and care most about. And for all of you in Marin, up at Kaiser, over at Redwood uh, Trust, and for all my friends at Health and Human Services, I thank you. I'm your neighbor. I love you. You're the best. Thank you, Michael. And thank you for that powerful message. I just want you to know that I'm definitely going to be doing Google Earth in my brain for sure. <laughs> I definitely will. And um, thank, you, thank you for the reminder about the importance of perspective and connection. It's so important to remember. <laughs> That's so great, John. Yeah, go to Google Earth. And I think every tech person should learn that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good skill. It's a good way to think for sure. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to track your progress. Don't forget to submit your Google form. We need that by uh, Friday at one o'clock. We'll have our drawing at Friday at three. And make sure you join us tomorrow at 7.45 uh, for your 7.45 a.m. for the, the next mindful moment. So thank you, everyone. Be well. <laughs>